But I was telling him, man, I'm finna work out because everybody at the party probably drunk or hungry. <laughs> so I got the advantage over everybody because nobody's thinking I'm finna get up early in the morning and work Zero. out. So that's my advantage and I feel like it just compounded interest. You know, if I keep doing that and you keep just being satisfied with just doing the bare minimum and I keep doing a little bit more than what you do, yep. Yep. two, three years later, yep. I'm gonna, my career's gonna extend past yours. I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna fly past you. So, so in other words, Gucci's willing to work. He's willing to go above and beyond. And yeah, I can enjoy this moment. I can enjoy this, this opportunity. But at the same time too, I know tomorrow morning I get it, I get it to work because I want to change my life. And that compounding effect over time, there's a separation that happens over time. You do it over and over and over, month in, month out, week in, week out, year in, year out. You start separating yourself from everybody else. What's crack lacking, everybody? Money smart guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas, and we have another reaction video for you. Gucci Mane, this time around, who actually credits his life for going to prison. His turn in his life, losing 100 pounds, getting married, all that stuff established after, to and through, his prison sentence. So, listen, if you had aspirations to one to become a cash flow first generation millionaire, it's how you think money, it's how to strategize money, and how you go about your daily life so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. So let's take a look at Gucci Mane here on an interview we had on Complex on the uh, everyday struggle. So check this out. Gucci, I'm, I'm, every time I see you doing great things, especially now, I'm so impressed. I think the whole culture feels so proud about you and your transformation. And really just- By the way, just look at this guy. Look at this guy. Completely different as compared before he went to prison. I mean, just squares, doesn't he look like even the same guy? Your growth over the years. Um, really, I want you to kind of break down, you know, because I, I was, I even posted up like yesterday on my page, I was like, yo, you know, Gucci was explaining kind of like how him and his wife been through it. Yeah. And kind of like how, you know, a lot of people want now Gucci with his wife and how he's, he's, a, he's a good man, mm -hmm. but like, he was on some bullshit at first, you know? <laughs> I was like, I, I, yeah, the, by the way, isn't that awesome that Life is filled with grace, man. Life, you can just, he's just right now, before I even get into the reaction, I'm watching this for the very first time as you're watching this, for those of you who are watching this for the very first time, I've never seen this before, but it's amazing how life can be filled with grace and forgiveness and you can make a choice to change your life around today, no matter what circumstance you come from, no matter how you grew up, whatever socioeconomic status, whatever upbringing you had, by making a decision, that fine line between good and bad and great and greater that fine line between those two things is just your choices your thoughts and your decisions what led you to this point i think i just grow you know age you know you just start growing up you just start growing up the 21 year old gucci that rap and the 25 year old two different people you know what i'm saying good and definitely different from the 39 year old gucci very good i just grew up just matured start learning things start adding them to my skill set you know that's it. When you're young, you really don't have a lot of skills to deal with a lot of things. As I start getting older, I start, you know, getting more skills and they help me. You know? By the way, when I was coming out of the Marine Corps, I thought I knew everything. I spent uh, my entire uh, 19, when I was 17 years old, 18, 19, 20, all the way to 25, I spent eight years in the Marines. You know, I was a sergeant in the Marines. I thought I knew everything. I wanted to go against counsel. I wanted to go against everything that my family said I should do. I decided to hastily get married and divorced all in the same year and have a kid and it just wrecked my life because... I thought I knew everything, and sadly, that's what uh, I went through in my 20s and, and uh, early 30s. But until something tragically happened to me, and maybe something tragically happens to you, that's the opportunity for you to say, you know what? What is the lesson that we learned here? How can I start turning my life on? What is the silver lining in this pain and this problem and this issue that can serve me today to have a better life? You know what I'm saying? When you work with younger artists, are they receptive to your advice? Probably you not. About all the things you go through? Sometimes people have to learn for themselves, but... Uh, so there's two ways you can learn. You can learn the, the hard way, or you can learn the wise way. Now, your way is you gotta figure out mistakes all on your own. Even though somebody in your ear says, you should do it different, you should do it different, pride gets the best of you. Ego gets the best of you. But if you seek wisdom, it'll save you a lot of time and save you a lot of money. It's like, a, I, I think it's, it's the mission how I give it to them. You don't wanna preach to them because people kinda like don't wanna be preached to, you know what I'm saying, or talk to. That's, that's so true I talk too. with them, but my whole thing, I try to like just show them through my actions and bring them so they come to me. So they see the benefit of, okay, damn, I see why Gucci don't do this, or I see why he's doing this, or I see the benefit. So I, I got uh, kids that are, three adult kids that are 26 and twins that are 21. 
And uh, my style of coaching my kids or talking to my kids is much different when they were, eight, you know, eight, nine, ten years old. Even they're teenagers, much different. You not only have to show them options and show them the error of the ways of the the, the wise path and the and, and the and the dumb path, but also why? Why are you making certain decisions? Why? 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 This is the biggest question people ask. If I'm doing this, you know, for the sake of just listening to you, they don't want to do it. They have to figure out why. So when you're reconciling with yourself or you're talking to people you're in your circle partners about a decision you got to make the smart way the wise way the dumb way you got to figure all this stuff out you got to tell them why and give them choices and then from there the tonality how you present it how you bring it your demeanor and how you present coaching and showing guidance it's all about how you deliver it because sometimes uh like you said if you're preaching to people they don't want to listen to you man you should do this you should do that you need to do this you know this man younger person i don't need to do nothing i don't need to listen to you i shouldn't have to i'll figure stuff out on my own but you've talked to me listen you know, you're older and you talk to the, the, the younger generation. Chill, cool, relate, show them options, show them choices. Hey, here's your pass. Make your decision. I'm not here to tell you to do anything. This is what happens when you make this decision. This is what happens when you make the deci this decision. You have to deal then with the consequence. What do you want to do? Benefits of being married. Gucci, what you think about that? Then they come to me as opposed to me saying, hey, you know, I don't think you should do that. You know, when I try to do that or pull somebody to the side and talk to them about it, it don't never really go good because they ain't in that space. Mm -hmm. But when they come to me for it, you know, it seemed like uh, then I kind of like mentor them or some shit like that. When, that last, the last like time, like when you came home, I think that's the that's the time where everybody just saw like the biggest transformation. It felt right? different. Like, it felt yeah, different than any other. If, I, it felt like before, like, yeah. It, maybe you were learning something, but we didn't really see it. That last time, as Wayne yeah. was mentioning, right. it and felt different. He said that going to prison saved his life. Strong words. You know, the younger up-and-coming artists, like a lot of them grew up on your shit or whatever. Like, is it is it tough being like the leading example sometimes? Because, you know, they, they want to come to you for music advice and all of that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you can look at a 21-year-old and see, damn, that was I was doing the same shit. Like, Listen, I've never been in prison, but I've been deployed in the military. And every time I've been away from the people I love and care about, the people I, I, I would rather much be with, and you go through hell and the, the battlefield of the mind, the battlefield, battlefield that uh, I was going through. I said, man, when I get back home to America, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to appreciate America so much. I wonder if Gucci Mane did the same thing too as well. He said, if I get out of prison, when I get out of prison, I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to do that. I'm never going to be in this hole ever again. I wonder if those strong decisions were made and he exercised the decision when he made because, listen, the reason why a lot of people go back to their old ways is because they hang around people from their old ways. So I wonder what he's had to say here about potentially a new crowd that he's been surrounding himself with, people that he's been getting in their ear and getting their wisdom on how to live their life after prison. I wonder what he has to say here. I wouldn't say that it's tough, but it's like it's a, it's a responsibility that you should be conscious of, and I'm conscious of it and aware of it. And um, it's not a burden. It's a challenge, and I embrace it. I think it's good. Change and really maturation that you've gone through, not only mentally, but spir also spiritually, but even physically. Here we go. Yeah. You know, that mentally, after you got personally, out, like you mentioned today. Physically, spiritually. The first you went combination. Five, the first thing you did was hit the gym. Yeah. I mean, where did that come from? Like, like why do you feel like that was important? It's kind of hard for me to articulate it in just such a short time. To me, it's a lot of practical reasons. You know what I'm saying? Um, Let's just say, for instance, I went out to dinner yesterday to commemorate my album, Atlantic Throat, for me. Everybody came that out. catch, right? Yeah. yeah. So my whole thing is, I told my, and I flew my trainer with me. Mm. You know, I don't usually do that, but just so happened, I'm just flew him up and just kind of celebrate with me, you know? By the way, that's awesome. Yeah, I've, I've been in uh, many of those journeys together with my trainer, uh, Milton. Uh, listen, I, I was one of those weird guys. Some guys need to get in the gym, lose weight. I'm up. I'm, 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 I'm opposite. You know, I'm, I'm one of those guys that I can't keep on weight. And uh, me being skinny is a result of bad habits, bad diet, bad sleep, uh, not getting in the gym. I have a weird body type where it just you know, just kind of eats itself. And I have to be on top of it. So uh, a lot of military injuries had uh, piled up on me. But anyway, make a long story short, uh, built a relationship with my trainer. And uh, when I relocated from Chicago, worked with him for a year, almost two years when I moved to Dallas, my trainer also came down with me too as well. So shout out to Milton Alvarez out there. He's been in my corner and the area of making sure that uh, what's going on, at least in my physical body so I can operate mentally and, and, and spiritually even better. Uh, I'm reminded of a proverb and it goes like this. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 says, walk with the wise and become wise for a companion of fools suffer harm. She's had a conversation with a good friend of mine, Luis Barajas. And uh, one of his sisters, because he, he's a... a a uh, business manager for entertainers. 
And, uh, you know, a lot of guys in a financial world either work with artists, entertainers, celebrities, or athletes. And the consensus is the hard part about working with an athlete is that the athlete since college, since high school has had an entourage. And so they feel when they go pro, they owe the entourage money. They owe them finances. They owe them parties because they were with their crew ever since they were in high school and college. And sadly, money dwindles away when the people that you're walking with is just your entourage, not with other wise people in their endeavors and in their areas in their lane. And so there's a reason why a Jay-Z will have lunch with a Warren Buffett. There's a reason why Puff Daddy will have lunch with Ray Dalio. And he even considers him the, 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 the basically the Steve Jobs of the hedge fund world, Ray Dalio, his mentor. So if you're walking with the wise, you become wise. You walk with a company of fools, then you become a fool. The other saying, show me the people you hang around, I'll show you your friends. I'll show you how your life turns out. So I suspect that Gucci Mane, after getting out of prison, started with the mindset of who he surrounded himself with, had everything to do with his transformation and to continue that transformation and evolution conti to continue. But I would tell him, man, I'm finna work out because everybody at the party probably drunk or hungry. <laughs> so I got the advantage over everybody because nobody's thinking. I'm finna get up early in the morning and work out. Zero. So that's my advantage, and I feel like it just compound the interest. You know, if I keep doing that, and you keep just being satisfied with just doing the bare minimum, and I keep doing a little bit more than what you do, yep. Yep. two, three years later, yep. I'm gonna, my career's gonna extend past yours. I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna fly past you. So, so in other words, Gucci's willing to work. He's willing to go above and beyond. And I'm reminded of another, probably we just did this on a Sunday night uh, Wealth and Wisdom series about the over and abundance of pleasure. Here's how it goes. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 17 reads, whoever loves pleasure will become poor. Whoever loves wine and olive oil will never be rich. Kind of a weird thing, huh? But was Gucci buying into? Yeah, I can enjoy this moment. I can enjoy this, this opportunity, but at the same time too, I know tomorrow morning I get it, I get it to work because I want to change my life. And that compounding effect over time, there's a separation that happens over time. You do it over and over and over, month in, month out, week in, week out, year in, year out, you start separating yourself from everybody else. And it's, to me, I'm, it's just a simple, practical thing. Every day, do a little bit more than what everybody else is doing. It's like habit stacking. Yes, so habit, habit stacking. stacking. So like one or two years, now I dropped 101 albums, didn't even feel like it. It's like, oh, did y'all know we dropped 100 albums? No, nah, because every time I drop an album, good or bad, whether y'all like it or people don't like it, I'm gonna go back to work. There's a book out there that uh, I read a while ago. It's called The Slight Edge. That little bit, she, she mentioned it. I, I don't know what her name is, but habit stacking. You have the right attitude and behavior. You don't have to completely change your life from day one, but just small habits compounded over time. You save a little bit more money. Uh, you add a little bit of money to pay off debt. You increase uh, your, your take-home pay. Just a little bit more, just a little bit more, just a little bit more. You're a little bit more aware about uh, financial literacy. You're aware more about uh, what the type of moves you need to make. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Next thing you know, this time next year, your complete financial transformation is taking place. You know, 10 years from now, you're like, oh my gosh, you can't believe you're at where you're at. You, we always knew you'd make it. You're like an overnight sensation. You didn't realize you've been working at this for 10 years. Compounding effect, or, and imagine over 20 years, the compounding effect of your, your choices, your thoughts, your habits, your decisions, that's that slight edge. And it's a thin line between success and rich and broke and wrong. You know, I know we touched on your transformation already, but like what your wife means to you, like, huh. you know, I'm not big on marriage personally, Yeah. but like when I see huh. how, you know, your wife helped you become a better man. By the way, I was there too as well. I, I was uh, I was a married, divorced, had another relationship, had kids. I was completely anti-marriage. I, uh, uh, I was basically single for 14 years, but I was feeling like this fella on the left and uh, no woman would ever be good for me. No woman would be ever good to be around my children. And next thing you know, I run into the right woman. And next thing you know, I straighten out my ways. And next thing you know, I see the next best version of myself that I never you know, imagined just being by myself. She opened up my perspective of what can happen with the two of us together. And I was just on a podcast with Adam Sostek, a host of The Sauce Show. And I was the guy right next to me, O'Neal. He says, listen, man, I'm about multiple girlfriends all at the same time. We're taking down this red pill, whatever that means. And I said, man, I'm on that show. I'm on that show. I'm like, I believe in one woman because this woman, my wife, absolutely changed my life. And I suspect this is the same thing happened here in Gucci Mane's life. I wanna hear what this guy has to say. It actually makes me think like think twice and be like, I'm serious. I'm good, no, good I'm for serious. you. I've never seen where, you know, um, a strong woman has really helped. And I can't name me no other cases like yeah. that. Not where somebody was down and out. A lot of times they were down on their last and then 
for the most part, they credit a lot of the, the pulling up to the woman they're with. Yeah, I credit it to my wife. Um, I love her. She's the love of my life. <laughs> Best thing ever happened to me. Ain't none of that. Inspiration. Forced me to be responsible. You know, if you get married, you shouldn't get married, and it shouldn't be nothing until you could, you know, hold yourself accountable. You know, and be and be. What a great point. By the way, if you have zero desire to be held accountable to anybody else, you, you want, by the way, you think just uh, having kids by yourself is a good thing. I, t I tell this, man, I've had kids, uh, me, myself, and I, single father, and co-parenting from two different households and having a marriage and raising two kids in the same household, both husband and wife together, there's a massive difference, massive difference. And until you're ready to hold yourself accountable to both your wife, the mother of your children, and your children, my friend, stay single, uh, use whatever birth control you need to be using, Keep it safe and keep it tight. Don't get anybody pregnant. Don't get pregnant yourself because it's a disservice. It is a massive, in my opinion, it's a massive sin to go out there and say, you know what? I can raise a kid by myself, me, myself, and I, because I believe that there's power in a husband and a wife together, two parties raising a child together and um, can't tell you how much of a blessing you rob them of, the children you rob them of by just trying to do it all by yourself. Love to know what you're thinking about that. Put it in the comment section below. You agree with me or don't agree with me? Put it in the comment section below. I love to know who follows the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel and what your opinions are. Mature about it. If you can't do that, marriage shouldn't be for you. Mm -hmm. But if you can do that, then you know, it's a blessed thing. With that being said, academics is never getting married. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. With that being said, because he's not really, he's not ready to be held accountable. I remember uh, I told Chin, I said, babe, listen, this is my phone. Go take my phone. Want to go in the bathroom, lock yourself in the door, go through my phone. Matter of fact, look at all my social media. Look at all my pictures. Look at all my DMs. Look at it. I have zero issues with you looking for my phone because I want to challenge all my energy, all my intention, all my desire. I want it to channel it towards you because I realize what investing in you, my, my wife, does to me in my life. And I remember of a proverb, and it goes like this. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4 reads, a wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. And boy, did I have decay. And what is a wife of noble character? Well, I won't go into it right now, but check out Proverbs chapter 31. A whole chapter is dedicated to a wife of noble character. And basically that's a guideline of what men should aspire to, what men should look for, and look in qualities of a woman today, which is not a lot of those qualities are followed today, which may be opposite of what may be seen on social media, but at the end of the day, man, you gotta be happy with that woman that you decide to live with and uh, share a life with and live in the same house and have more importantly have kids with. You have to be solid on who that woman is. Do not be a statistic. I pray that for, for those of you that watch the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel, that you don't get married too early, you do it in a hasty way, and you bring in children into this world, and there's conflict between husband and wife, and you guys are just putting all your sins and burdens upon the children. Your children take on more than you think. They will take on more than you think. And by the way, for those of you that were raised in single parent homes, what, have, what would it have been like for you to be raised with both mom and dad in the same house, working on a loving relationship? Nobody's ever perfect, but they're willing to be committed and working together. What difference do you think would that have made in your life? Please, I'm curious, please put it in the comment section below. Nah, hey, listen, he needs man. a good woman in his yeah, life. Hey, listen, man. Woman, if if, if, if I find a woman that, that that could help me as much as Gucci woman has helped him, but you got to help her too. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. Oh yeah, I love I love what he just said there. It's not about what she does for you; it's about what you can also do that, for her. No, Slam that, dunk. You know, love it. Team for that. You got you got to help her too. You got to be somebody. Ain't nobody gonna help nobody who ain't ain't got nothing going. Mm. You got you know you got to be about something, man. Somebody be about something. They want to be a part. Everybody want to stand by somebody who's doing something. Who on that? Who who show up? Who about their business? Mm -hmm. If you about your business, man, there's gonna be a line of people, a line mm -hmm. of women yes. can't wait to say, yes. "Hey, ask them what's going on." But if you ain't about your business, hell no, nah, they don't want to marry your ass anyway. Oh, I love this if version you of him, man. Suffer at least these days, you know. Like, I think you you've admitted in the past that you know you used to have some, some addiction problems. Like, you used yeah. to be t taking certain 100%. drugs or whatever. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Now you know it's it's. It seems you're living a very clean life. Yeah. Do you go through issues of, you know, kind of like relapses and stuff? Keep yourself out of situations where you're not tempted or whatever. Like, how do you deal with that? Now, to be honest, my whole life has changed. It ain't even no. That's why I say, like, people say you don't want no cap in your rep. 
You can't get the old Gucci. The old Gucci did those things. This is who I am now. So everything I'm doing is like I'm I'm being so honest and upfront with it that it's like it got to be something to it. We we need to see what we. This is different. This is like yeah. a, you got to grow. You got to. My whole life has changed. Like I work out every day. I go to sleep a lot earlier. Uh, I don't be with a lot of the same people. So they don't even mm. put me in the situations. I'm not. I don't live that lifestyle. Mm. I don't. I don't even see the value of. What type of life do you want to live? What's your outcome? Are you clear about what you want? Are you clear about the work to get to go where you want to go? Are you clear about the demand of those dreams and where you want to go? And are you 100% clear about how it's going to feel on the other side when you pay the price, when you make the right choices because you got clear about what you want? What's going to feel like when you get to that finish line? And then to be clear again about the next level. Do you realize what it's going to feel like? I, I believe that Gucci Mane here has got some clarity, massive clarity, because he's got nothing else causing him to be confused. You know, I was reminded of a very powerful quote. If the devil cannot take you out, the devil will try to confuse you and keep you busy. And one of the ways he tries to keep you busy is to throw addictions your way. Because you know the devil knows that you're about to do something powerful in your life. He wants you confused to not experience it. Being around people who want to, you know, do drugs all the time. It's like, you ain't gonna go to work. That's like, cause I'm 39 now, it's like, damn, after you do all the smoking and drinking, is you gonna wake up and go to work and get handle your business and make some money? If you ain't doing that, then it's like, man, it wouldn't take me two seconds to see the inside person I wanna be around. I wanna you know, um, I remember Patrick, but they were having a conversation because, you know, listen, we've had our times in the clubs and uh, we both came on this consensus of why we don't get loaded anymore because we are so focused in on our dreams that we don't want to deal with tomorrow morning's hangover. Because tomorrow morning's hangover, we don't get that done until mid-afternoon. But yet we got to run a business. We got to be operating on a, on a schedule, on deadlines, and, and the accountability to the people that uh, we employ or the accountability to our, our, ben, our vendors and our partners, or the, the carries that we do business with. We have a responsibility to them. It just, we just don't want to deal with the hangover. We don't want to deal with the recovery time. I, instead of that, taking that energy to recover, I'm much more that much further. Remember that slight edge you were talking about? I'm that much more further ahead towards my goals and my dreams. And I have this compounding effect that goes into an exponential motion. I don't want to be around nobody that just want to be around me. I don't, I'm too old to hang out. I expect it. Yeah. Respect it, man. Like, man. What? Academics is looking for his life change. That's why he has all these deep questions. Nah, man. When I see when I see him walking Jay, in Milan and, and and he looks so. I'm gonna yeah. give you some game, and and, this shit, and I'm dead serious. Here we go. Go get this book called "As a Man Thinking." Oh, uh, great and book. Just, and just read it repeatedly. Great book. Just read it over and over. By the easy book, you guys can download it. I suggest you guys read it right now. Matter of fact, we'll put the link to Amazon in the comment section below, in the uh, description. Oh, and it just, it just talk about your thoughts and about what you think about. As a man thinking, like, a man is like a value. Wow, what do you think? So if that's what you're thinking about, then, you know, it'll, you'll start, like, acting on those things. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, the, start, the interest will start to compound. By the way, that's from Proverbs, too, again. So let's take a look at what... Proverbs, King Solomon, the wisest and richest king who ever lived. Let's read what he said in Proverbs about as a man thinketh. It goes like this. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And to give context to the scripture, King Solomon is talking about you sitting down with people, eating and drinking, and he's thinking about the cost of giving. And so if as a man is thinking about the cost, instead of for the act of just giving, he's thinking about the cost of it given to you. Just don't take it because a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so... When you're going about life and you're going to read this book, you're going to figure out that a man's life is a sum of a man's thoughts, actions, choices, habits, and behaviors. But it starts with how you think, because how you think things, actually to go even before that, because before you think things is how you see things. So how you see things, how you take in this, how you hear and how you see is then going to formulate into how you think. And then how you think is how you behave. And then how you behave is the results that you're going to get in your life. And you have to ask yourself, will I be happy with those results? If not, then I got to go back to the way I see and hear things, the way I think things. So therefore I do things to get the results that I want in my life. So I'm curious about what you guys are thinking. What are some of the things that you had as a takeaway from this conversation, this this reaction to Gucci Mane, his transformation, him having a wife, him overcoming addiction, this transformation in his finances, this transformation in his work. I'm impressed with what this guy's got going on in his life. More power to you. Continue prayers for you, brother. And much success 
to your endeavors. Before I let you go, please check out these other reaction videos I had with other celebrities and artists and entertainers and learning from their mistakes because it's one thing to learn from your mistakes, but it's wiser to learn from the mistakes of others. That being said, if you haven't done so already, if you found value in this video, please consider hitting like. If you watched other videos here on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel and you have not subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, please consider hitting subscribe and hitting notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your Mighty Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.